Once you have your project plan set up and ready to go, as we just watched in all the previous training videos, the least of which, of course, having a listing of all the tasks that need to be completed in order to complete your project goal, which in this case is to create a Spiffy software training manual. Then, of course, over in the Gantt chart, you can see a listing of all my resources next to the tasks that they're assigned to. And don't forget to set a baseline, you know, to take a snapshot of everything that we have here before you begin the project. Once you have your project plan set up, remember, it's just a plan. A plan of what you hope to happen or what you would like to happen with your project versus what actually is going to happen. For example, let me go ahead and look at task 3 here. I'm going to hover over the dividing bar and drag it over to the right a little bit so I can see the start and finish dates. And let me go back so I can see the actual bar for the exam and software task over in the Gantt chart. Let's pretend that Rider 1 who's working on this couldn't come in on the uh, plan date, which was August the 1st. Let's say he got sick and can only come in on August the 6th to begin uh, his task. Well, we've got our plan here versus what actually happened. So to enter in our actuals, there's another view that we can go to to enter those in. In fact, in that view, you'll have the same fields up at the top, but with the three-letter prefix of ACT. ACT start, ACT finish, ACT duration, ACT cost, for your actual cost, duration, start, and finish times. And the purpose of that, the reason why we want to keep our default plan separate from what actually happens is so that we can compare against, well, that baseline of what actually happened versus what we planned. Because that could be very telling of what we're missing in our project here, or we can use it as a lesson for future projects of what to do or what not to do. Maybe we don't want to use this writer anymore because he's always sick. He always seems to start his task late and so on. Now there's a couple ways that you can enter in your actuals. The first way is simply switching to a new view. And this view is coming up here, clicking on the view menu, going down to more views, or of course, you can right click on the claps view bar and go to more views. Scroll down and let's go to the task sheet view. It's a view about our task. Double click on it. We have a listing of all our tasks. Now the table that I want to be in, let me come up here and click on the view menu. Instead of the entry table for a task, I want to be able to do the tracking for the task. And there we go. We have our actual start, actual finish, actual duration, actual cost, actual work for all these tasks. So this is where you would enter in the actuals or one of the places that you can mark your actuals or the uh, progress of your tasks. Now I'm going to come up here because my task column here is a little bit small. I can't see the task, so I can just hover over in between the two headers until I get a two-way arrow pointing in opposite directions and double-click really fast, and it'll do a best fit. Take the longest task in this column and fit it to that. Now, in all simplicity, when you want to enter in the progress of a task, for example, like starting the training manual, if there hasn't been any change in the actual start dates or actual finish dates, in other words, we're on target, they haven't started any earlier than what we planned or any later, then just come over here and keep it really simple and type in 100% when it's complete and hit enter. Automatically you'll pull in your uh, default plans as those actual start and finish dates. So that's really easy. Another field I want to look at is the remaining duration field. So we're into our project and let's say that the duration for task 3 isn't going to be 5 days but we find out or we get a second guess that it's going to be 4 days. We'll leave the plan alone, but here in the tracking, we'll change it from 5 and click it down to 4 and click off in a blank area. And notice that it shrinks the day for the research phase from 12 to 11, but it increases it down here for the outline phase from 13 to 14. Why? Well, remember, we have a task constraint here on task 9. Let me double click to open it up, and you can see here on the advanced tab that we have a constraint date of no earlier than August the 25th. So, what's happening if you can picture the Gantt chart? is that the black bar for the research phase is getting pulled back by one day and the outline phase is getting stretched out one day to take up the slack. But it can't go ahead and pull up the end slack because of that task constraint that starts no earlier than August the 25th. So if you see weird things that are going on when you enter in your actuals or make some changes here that are highlighting different dates that are either increasing or decreasing, you want to do a little detective work and find out if you got task constraints on one of the tasks. Okay, so we know how to mark our task complete here if they're on track, in other words that they haven't changed from the plan by either typing in 100% or as we learned in the previous training video really quick, you can bring up the tracking toolbar by right clicking up here along any one of these toolbars and then going down to tracking. 
because here you've got the little uh, percentages here, 0, 25, increments of 25. I'm going to go ahead and select task 3. And again, I can either type in the uh, percentage complete here, which I can get more minute, like 13%, or select it, come up here on the tracking toolbar, and click on the 100% complete. And then once it's marked complete, you can see that all the changes that have been made, or in this case updated, reflecting the actual plan. Because remember, I haven't changed or entered anything different as far as the actual start and finish dates go, so it just copies in over the plan that we had set up originally before we actually started keeping track of our actuals here and entering them in the task sheet here in the tracking view. Then you'll notice over here, remember how we had a remaining of four days? Well, once you mark it complete, it says, okay, of the four days, you actually completed four days. So again, if we had five days remaining and we marked it 100%, it would put five days over here, whatever the default plan was. But we changed and we varied from the plan when we went from five days down to four. And so that's what it's actually keeping track of. Now you can do this other ways as well. If I come up here and hit undo, and I come back in here and I say, okay, the actual work was 32 hours and hit enter. Again, you're looking at four days. So I can mark it 100% complete. I can type in the actual duration four days, or I can type in the actual work 32 hours. It'll go ahead and calculate that. And of course, if it wasn't 32 and we mark down the hours to, let's say, 21 and click off in a blank area, it automatically does the calculation and it says, okay, you only have 66% of this completed. It's not the actual duration that it took to complete it. So if I hit undo, and this could get messy here, and I hit undo again, again, we want to change the duration of how long it's going to take, or we can just come over here and say, you know what, the actual duration was three days and hit enter. And let's take a look at this. When you enter in the three days, it says, look, the remaining duration originally was four days, so of the three, you're down to one, which equals four, and you're only 75% complete. We'll hit undo again. And then we'll come over here and say for our actual start date, now we got to go all the way back to 2008, so what I'll do is I'll just click again in here, and delete 9 and type in 8 and then go ahead and click on the drop down arrow. So I'm back in 2008. Let's say it didn't start August the 1st but we were delayed until August the 5th. There's the actual start time. And then what I can do is come over here and when I complete either type in 100% of course or type in the four days for the actual days and hit enter and then watch what happens. It actually calculates out from the 5th which is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday four days. So again, just enter it like you see it or like as the actuals come through. And then keep an eye on all the changes to make sure that that's what you expect. Now later on we'll have reports, we'll actually have different views that we can go to where we can track and compare what we actually entered in here against the baseline or our default plan. And again, you want to make sure that you set that baseline. If you haven't set it before you begin entering in your actuals, well, then it's too late. So you want to make sure that you watch my setting the baseline training video. Now, I don't want to leave you hanging here, but we do have another training video that covers what a progress bar is, but what the heck, I'll just show it to you right now. We've made the changes, right? We've entered in the actuals. So if I right-click on the collapse view bar and go back to my Gantt chart, you'll see over here in the indicator column, you can see that it's checked or that it's been completed. And then over to the right, you'll notice that uh, the task has been bumped out a couple of days. It used to start over here on the first. And you also see a black bar going through it. That's the progress bar. When it goes all the way through, that means that it's 100% completed. If it's 50%, then the black bar or progress bar goes only halfway. And again, we'll cover this in the progress bar training video, which will be really short. But I wanted you to know that what we did in that one view as updating or entering in our actuals will also be displayed over here in the Gantt chart in the uh, actual chart view here. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.